It's the holiest day of the year for the Shiite Muslims, Ashura. They commemorate their first martyr, Ali Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, who sacrificed himself in combat 1400 years ago. This year, Ashura Day was also the first anniversary of Hezbollah's victory in forcing Israel out of southern Lebanon after 22 years of occupation. The Lebanese now see Hezbollah as liberators and the Middle East as the only Arab army to defeat the might of the Israeli forces. Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's leader, affirms their holy struggle or jihad is not over. The continuation of the conflict ensures their status in the Arab world and mobilizes and motivates the rank and file. This religious fanaticism inspires Hezbollah on the battlefield, but it's also turned the party of God into a major political force within Lebanon. Just 20 years ago, the Shiite Muslims were a neglected and downtrodden sect in Lebanon. With its powerful backers Syria and Iran, Hezbollah is dictating Lebanon's foreign policy, a fact the Lebanese government is powerless to change. But not everybody agrees with Hezbollah's holy mission. The Christians, who make up a relatively rich third of the Lebanese population, fear it could drag them into an escalating regional conflict and further reduce their influence in Lebanese politics. Gilbran Chouini started a campaign against Syria's presence in Lebanon a year ago. As a power broker, Chouini has managed to unite all the Christian factions in this call. And in so doing, is taking a stand against Hezbollah as well. We think that uh, Hezbollah should come, uh, should become a normal political party like all the political parties and not be a super political party with weapons, with militias, with uh, an army and uh, everything. Down south, Hezbollah acts as a de facto government. Pictures of their martyrs line the roads. The former Lebanese government has little presence here, and it doesn't have the money or the will to reconstruct the war-torn south. Hezbollah does. The people of Maidun fled when the Israelis attacked and destroyed their village in 1988. Like many other villages, it's only taken Hezbollah six months to rebuild Maidun. The Nasser family is one of the first to move back. Hezbollah is capitalizing on the government's failures, building support among the community and ensuring its position as the dominant authority in South Lebanon. Hezbollah's carefully planned penetration into Lebanese society begins in the classroom. 
the emphasis here is on strong moral and Islamic teachings, laid on top of normal academic studies. Hezbollah has three major colleges like this one in Beirut and another 24 in their strongholds of the south and the Bekaa Valley. The party of God is making sure it has an army of supporters in the future. If you work, if you study, you can work, uh, you can fight your enemy in the future. This is we usually concentrate on. Study now so that you can understand your enemy in the future. You can fight them in the future. If you don't know uh, uh, their language, how do they think, you can fight, you can fight them. Hezbollah has built a community on notions of martyrdom and sacrifice. It is every soldier's wish to die a martyr. Sana is the widow of the famous martyr, Ali al Sain. Ali was not a suicide bomber, but his mission, a kamikaze-style raid on an Israeli post, was sure to bring his death. The family's living room is now a shrine to Ali's memory. Sana is proud of Ali's achievements. Ali left behind his oldest son and triplets. They were too young to remember him. All they have are videos to revive their memories. For the moment, they can just watch and wonder about their father. Uh, but as the widow of a martyr, Sana's status in society has been elevated, and Hezbollah takes care of all their housing and financial needs. لا يمكن الناس تعرفني صدفة كون قاعدة معهم صدفة يعرفوني إني أنا زوجة الشهيد بتحسيهم تغيروا بصيروا يطلعوا لي بنظرة إنه إنه أنت أعطيتي شيء كيف نحن قاعدين معاك أنت عم إنه ما بعرف بتحسي شعورهم شعورهم حلو في 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 لذي بالشعور معهم Hezbollah's support has grown because it combines guns with good works. An entire social welfare network has been built by Hezbollah for the Shiite community. With no national health service, Hezbollah provides top-class medical care at half the price. We are trying to make it feasible to the poor and to the needy. I mean the prices, they are very low compared to other hospitals. Um, I can give an example. You can see a specialist physician in our hospital at half what you pay in his own clinic. And for sure it is about one fourth of what you pay outside in other hospitals like AUB or Hotelieu or other hospitals in Lebanon. Most of the money for Hezbollah's social programs, like the building of this hospital, comes from Iran. For Iran, financing Hezbollah deepens its influence in the region and serves the purpose of exporting its Islamic revolution. Up until recently, Hezbollah received between 10 and 20 million dollars a month from Iran. However, with the rise of the reform movement in Iran, the aid tap is being turned off, and Hezbollah is expanding into legitimate businesses, like supermarkets, the manufacturing industry, the property market, and banks. What's starting to worry the Christians is that Hezbollah's growing strength will upset the fragile balance in Lebanese politics and will ultimately mean an Islamic state in Lebanon. So we think that we have the right to live here. It's our country, it's our land. We don't have to take lessons from anybody. And uh, we think that we've been here before them. 
and uh, we never claimed for, for a Christian republic because we always believed that uh, we can together run a country, and it was like that. So uh, Hezbollah is a, 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 a complete Islamic party financed by the Iranians with a very clear program, which is implementation of Islamic Republic in Lebanon and in the Arab world. That's a claim rejected by Abdullah Kassar, a member of the Lebanese parliament. He's the moderate face of Hezbollah. Kassar's constant companions are two bodyguards, gun always at hand, routine for a Lebanese politician. Hezbollah's military success down south translated into votes. The national election last August saw Hezbollah win eight seats in parliament. As a political party, Hezbollah is seen as honest and accountable, a rarity in Lebanese politics. As well as being driven by Islam, Abdullah Kassar says Hezbollah is pragmatic. Openly calling for an Islamic state would isolate them from the majority of the electorate and lock them out of any role in government. Kassir says Hezbollah is working within the system to force change. And with seven other Hezbollah MPs, that's something they can do. They form one of the biggest voting blocs in the Lebanese parliament. At this meeting with Education Minister Abdul Rahim Murad, they have succeeded in getting some extra funding for their schools. <laughs> But the real power of Hezbollah rests with clerics like leader Hassan Nasrallah and his deputy, Naim Qasim, who are considered to speak with the authority of God. They are part of the Shara Council that makes all military, social and political decisions. When asked, the leaders do not deny their goal is an Islamic state. They are just careful about how they say it. بموافقة الشعب عليها فإذا افترضنا أن الشعب وافق على إقامة دولة إسلامية تقوم هذه الدولة وإذا لم يوافق نكون غير موفقين في إقامة هذه الدولة ونعمل بجهد لنقترب منها لكن على قاعدة حرية الاختيار At the Lebanese border with Israel, it's not Lebanese flags that mark the reclaimed territory, but Hezbollah's symbol. Under UN Resolution 425, which set the framework for the Israeli withdrawal from southern Lebanon, the Lebanese army was meant to replace Hezbollah at the border. A year on, this has not happened. Hezbollah is still fully armed. And to prove the point, it took 130 journalists to show them the new front line against Israel at the Sheba Farms. The Sheba Farms is a small parcel of Lebanese land taken by Israel when it won the Golan Heights from Syria in 1967.
A press conference was held under camouflage while Israeli planes circled high above. From behind a veil, a senior commander appears to explain the strategy. For the press, it was a rare chance to talk with the fighters the Israelis called terrorists. It was a meticulously organised tour, and the guerrillas talk about their fight to liberate the Sheba farms using the right mix of religious and nationalist terms. Because we believe in Allah, we believe that we have to fight to free our country. Uh, we saw a lot of massacres against our people, about, uh, against our children, against, against our women. So we believe that we have to fight to free our country. And as you see right now, we free a part of our country and there is still a little part. OK, we're going again. But this show of strength is set up for the cameras. To outsiders, Hezbollah would never reveal the true nature or location of its operations. This is Hezbollah in action, attacking the Israeli militia, the South Lebanese army or the SLA, just before the withdrawal last May. Their relentless attacks against Israeli forces and the SLA turned Israeli public opinion against the occupation of southern Lebanon. Hezbollah fighters are highly disciplined and organised, sometimes doing months of preparation before an attack. Unlike Hamas or the armed factions of the PLO, Hezbollah's operations have a high success rate. As part of the leadership of the United Nations Peacekeepers in South Lebanon, or UNIFIL, Timur Goksel knows Hezbollah intimately. For 18 years, he has had daily contact with the Hezbollah fighters. 500 will be the uh, core fighters. They had no baggage to carry. I mean, they had no logistics. They had nothing. I mean, everything was prepared for them. These were the four or five guys who go out in the operation. Uh, certainly, their intelligence gathering network was different. Uh, they used local sources, whatever. But when they, it comes to execution, uh, they, never, they were never very crowded. Goxel says they are successful because they have the support of the people and maintain their security. Hezbollah is very successful in the sense that it hides itself very well. It, never, it doesn't have any bases. I've been watching them since 1983 here. And in South Lebanon, everybody says, I guess they're right. I basically knew about where everything was. But to this date, after 18, 19 years, I still haven't discovered a single Hezbollah base or an office. They don't go around advertising it. They're very careful. They do the guerrilla business at its best. And uh, so there is no, nobody can tell you in exact terms how many Hezbollah bases are there. And uh, they don't keep bases. If they had any bases, the side would have destroyed them years ago. Hezbollah was the first guerrilla group to realize the camera can be more powerful than the gun. Every attack was filmed and released to the press within a couple of hours. In the Arab world, it gave Hezbollah celebrity status. Israel also found it increasingly difficult to deny their impact. With each broadcast, Hezbollah gained newfound respect and an influx of recruits. Hezbollah built on that success and now own and control one of the biggest satellite networks in the Arab world, Al Manar. It's their main voice of support for the Palestinian uprising or the Intifada. Naif Karim used to be a Hezbollah guerrilla, but now he's running Al Manar's multi million dollar operation. <laughs> الاضطهاد والقمع الذي يتعرض له الشعب الفلسطيني 
داخل فلسطين المحتلة من خلال حث الفلسطينيين على الصمود على التمسك بحقوقهم التمسك بأرضهم التمسك بحقهم في إقامة دولة مستقلة المنا has huge appeal in the Arab world also because of its strict moral code. No scantily clad women or bad language, but plenty of intifada. Half their airtime is devoted to it. News on the hour, specially composed songs and provocative propaganda clips. <laughs> They regularly broadcast their battles to show the Palestinians how it's done. Krayem says they need Hezbollah as a role model if they are to achieve a homeland. But I don't think that the fight of Hezbollah and its success in the defense is a strong support for the Palestinian people to return to the defense of the defense للاحتلال عسى ان يتمكن من الوصول الى النتيجه التي وصل اليها حزب الله في تحرير جنوب لبنان. انهض انهض يا ايها العربي قدسنا الابي. A major part of the Almana campaign is to whip up support in the Arab world for the Intifada. For the Palestinians, it serves as an important morale booster to keep the conflict going. We've got our holy message, as I told you before, um, to feel what, what others are passing through, their, their pain, their panic, um, their, their, their strong desire to get back their land. We know these feelings. We, we've been through this feeling before. They were able to witness this kind of resistance, a successful resistance, a fully dedicated resistance that is ascending from heavenly dimensions, from Islam. Uh, to fight the enemies of the humanity uh, embodied and represented by the Zionists and the Israelis. Israel accuses Hezbollah of directly funding and training militant Palestinian factions. It's a claim disputed by the United Nations. I know Hezbollah. It would be very, very difficult for these people who are so security-minded to share their own experience or their operations with anybody else. It just doesn't sound like that. But as I said, I, but I don't know how much, so I, I shouldn't talk I, uh, to, on the front of everything. But I know Hezbollah, and uh, as I said, they have a lot of common things. There'll be a lot of spiritual uh, support, moral support, but uh, physically, it just doesn't seem right, uh, possible to me. High in the mountains in southern Lebanon, the United Nations has stationed 5,000 soldiers to keep the peace between Hezbollah and the Israelis. The UN knows Sheba Farms is the place where the Israeli-Palestinian conflict could widen into a regional war. Syria is not confronting Israel through its own borders, but using southern Lebanon and Hezbollah as a way into the conflict. But the UN is set to cut half its forces here. 
leaving greater control to Hezbollah and its Syrian backers to continue their conflict with Israel. Opening the border to war was not a decision taken by the Lebanese government. And if there is a decision to open the border, let it be a real Arab decision. But until now, there have been no decision taken in any Arab summit to open the borders for any military operation against Israel. So why do you want me to open a war on my own? And if I want to open a war on my own in Lebanon, the declaration of war, our responsibility that are, is not only taken by a president or a political party alone or a government, it is something so important, you have to refer to the people. The Syrian presence is creating bigger divisions in Lebanese society. In April, the streets of Beirut were brought to a standstill. Thousands called for Syria to go, to take their 25,000 troops home and stop their political interference in Lebanon. And in taking this stand against Syria, the Christian groups were effectively coming out against Hezbollah. In the heat of all this, Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, rallied behind Syria, saying its powerful ally was needed because Lebanon was still at war with Israel. تقومون بعمل ليس من مصلحة لبنان لا بالاعتبار المحلي ولا بالاعتبار الإقليمي. Soon after, tensions came to a head, with both sides calling their supporters onto the streets to confront each other. Many were fearful another civil war would erupt. Bloodshed was avoided. A widespread Lebanese security crackdown was successful. But some pro-Syrian Muslim groups were allowed to demonstrate, while the anti-Syrian Christian groups were stopped. The way the Lebanese security forces only attacked the Christian demonstrators confirmed to many that Syria is still pulling the strings in Lebanon. Until now, we still think that Syria doesn't recognize Lebanon as an independent country and want us to be a satellite country. And we are not a satellite country to anybody. For the moment, both sides have averted armed confrontation and called for dialogue. But tensions could surface in the future. How soon depends on whether Hezbollah embraces Lebanon's democratic system or moves further towards an Iranian model of an Islamic state. If they choose the Islamic path, Lebanon will not see peace. Because Hezbollah will not accept the existence of Israel and the Christian political power within Lebanon. <laughs>